Hello, it's Alden. This question about shadows with green screen footage is a really good one because I just ran into this problem and I've been using a combination of three solutions. The first one, which is the ideal, is to create real shadows with your layers in Blender. For example, if your footage is transparent, their feet would be causing shadows on the floor based on the lighting of your scene. If your actor is moving from left to right on the same plane, it's pretty simple and you basically just need to intersect your layer slightly with the floor floor plane. But if your actor is moving toward or away from the camera, it does get a little bit more complicated. But there is a solution. The technique I used for that, I actually learned from Ian Huber, which is probably no surprise to anyone learning Blender. And it involves parenting the footage to the camera and then animating the scale to get the feet to line up with the floor. So here's a shot that I've been working on that involves five people turning this corner and walking down this hallway. This hallway is made with 3D scans, so everything is entirely CG. And four of the androids following our main character, who's played by Nana Visitor from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, are the same actress, which is partially why we filmed this on green screen, so I can do exactly this. So let's get started. First, you want your camera and your footage in the same position and rotation. You can select your footage and then select your camera and hit Control C and copy those two properties. If hitting Control C or Command C doesn't do anything for you, you have to activate the add-on. Then tab into your footage and hit G to move your footage and then Z twice and that'll move it along its relative Z axis. Move it so it's in front of the camera, but the origin point is gonna stay right where the camera is. And then from your camera view, scale it down so it matches. And from here, we're basically gonna scale the footage up and down so the feet are always matching the floor. So you wanna scale it so the bottom of the foot just touches the plane that is the floor. If you turn on auto keyframing, you can do this super easily. This process does take a little time, especially if like me, you have five individual layers of people turning a corner and walking down the hallway. When all of that is done, the scale will be moving your layer closer and closer to the camera to mimic that forward movement in 3D space. But to your camera itself, the footage looks normal. It cancels each other out. And the results are pretty good, but you'll notice one big problem. It doesn't take into account that both feet are on the floor but in your 2D plane, the back foot is higher than the lower foot. So you're only getting the shadow from the front foot. The way that I fix that is actually the third technique. But first, let's look at how you can bring in shadows for your green screen footage from the green screen footage itself. Here's an example from a work in progress shot. You'll notice that this is a green screen shot and there's a shadow below them. Again, this is still a work in progress, so this isn't, you know, final render, but I can show you what I was doing here with the shadows. There are two shadow layers here. One is using the actual green screen footage itself and, um, and just keying out the green and leaving the shadows. And I did that on this layer with Composite Brush, which is a paid plugin. It was a little bit expensive but it does have some very specific use cases that are really helpful. And this is one of them here. Let me bring the capacity up. So if I turn everything off, this is the, the shot itself. And what I was doing was keying out all of the lighter green areas. And I wanted to keep the, the shadows here. And you might be saying, you know, hey, Alden, if you were shooting this on a green screen, shouldn't you have made sure there were no shadows? And yes, you're right. But uh, that's not what happened. So um, consider it a blessing in disguise because this shadow reference is actually really helpful. So it's masked out, but I'm going to keep that mask off for now. So I used this composite brush where I could select just the lighter green and keep the darker green there. And then I just used a fill layer to make it a bit darker. I masked that out. And then I think that opacity was at like 35% or something like that. And that's how I kept the shadows underneath the key in that shot. And the second layer here is some more specific dark shadows underneath the feet of the chair because they looked like they were hovering a little bit and they just needed a kind of a dark shadow there just to show that they were sitting on the floor. Uh, this chair was broken during the shoot, so we had an apple box under it. So this whole bottom part is the same thing 
I took the bottom from this chair, just duplicated it over there and then had to add an actual shadow. And now let's go back to the blender shot for the third method, which is rotoscoping. If you look really closely at this shot, uh, you're gonna notice a lot of problems with the shadows, but it's going so quickly when it's in motion, you don't really notice it so much. So essentially what I did is I took a version of the, of the footage and took out all of the red because the shadows were blocking this red backlight and only having the green floor. So I color corrected the background version of the footage and then just manually keyframed these mats so that when the front foot was causing a real shadow, I was making a fake shadow for the back feet. And some places that looks a little messier than others, but again, when it goes fast, it sells it. This one honestly wasn't as big of a pain as I thought it was gonna be. There's still some weird flickering things happening with a couple of the layers that I might try to manually fix. One thing that you can do to avoid all of this is put a floor down on your green screen shoot. During our green screen day, we put down blankets on the floor to help with the green spill. But if I could do it all over again, what I would have done is instead brought in some type of flooring that we could put on camera. Some type of laminate that looked like it was concrete or tile or a metal grating, anything like that. Now we would have gotten a bunch of green spill on that floor, but I think that's something I could accommodate for and end up with realistic shadows on the floor better than having to manually do all these things. But as you know, production is what it is. And sometimes you just make do with what you have, especially when we're doing visual effects. Hopefully you found this somewhat helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments below. If this was an atrocious dumpster fire of a tutorial, maybe keep that to yourself. And be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you want more tutorials. And definitely ask me if you have any other questions about visual effects, about Blender, about After Effects, about filmmaking, anything that you need to make your film a reality. Let me know and hopefully I can help you out with a, with a tutorial. <laughs>